S&P 500 and NASDAQ closing at all-time highs. The Dow up, gold up, real estate. Hello and welcome to another Trendspider technical analysis series video. We've all heard the term, if they don't scare you out, they'll wear you out. Well, choppy markets, they're designed to fool you, but it doesn't have to be this way. In this video, we're going to discuss the concepts of Wyckoff accumulation and distribution so that you can learn how to trade the chop and never get left on the sidelines for the big move again. Let's jump into it. The accumulation process starts when the pressure of a downward move leaves the market. This downward move is called a markdown, and the first thing we want to look for at the end of a markdown to signal the beginning of the accumulation process is a selling climax. A selling climax is an instance in which a high amount of volume comes into the market. Although selling climaxes are often associated with feelings of panic and capitulation, the price will often close well off the lows as smart money begins to step into new long positions. With smart money stepping in and shorts beginning to cover, a sharp bounce in price is generated, which Wyckoff calls the automatic rally. Once the automatic rally ends, the price begins to fade lower, but tends to find support just above the low of the selling climax. This is called the secondary test, and from this test, the price will make another push higher in an attempt to gain the automatic rally high, seeking liquidity that lies just above it. This move helps to establish the top of the range, an important area that will come into play later, and brings us into phase B of the Wyckoff accumulation process. Once a new high is made relative to the automatic rally high, the price again tends to slip lower, this time targeting not just the secondary test low, but also the selling climax low. There is a lot of liquidity down there, and smart money wants to trap as many shorts as possible before the big move higher. This new low is called the secondary test in phase B, and it's the perfect way to coax in short bias traders and also allow smart money to add to their long positions. Once they've absorbed all of the existing supply, the price is free to drift higher, ultimately testing the top of the accumulation range. Once the price arrives back at the top of the range, we look for it to stall once more. This is the point at which both sides start to become exhausted, we are now deep in the wear you out part of the accumulation process. Once the price fails to make a new high, the basic rules of trend suggest we can begin to anticipate that a new low will be made. It's this new low that ushers in phase C of our accumulation process, the spring. The spring is a pivotal moment of the accumulation process, often resulting in a climactic sell-off. This is the real scare you out moment, specifically designed to separate the last of the weak hands from their positions. Much like the automatic rally discussed earlier though, a key element of the spring is a false breakdown where the price is able to quickly recover back into the trading range. After the spring, it becomes clear that smart money has finished its accumulation process and the price is generally able to move quickly back towards the top of the range after a short period of consolidation above the spring low. There might be some initial resistance at or near the top of the range, but ultimately the price is able to push to a new high. This sign of strength ushers in phase D. Often, after a breakout to a new high, there will be one final test of the top of the range before a new markup period begins. A successful hold of this range at the last point of support concludes the accumulation process and moves us into phase E, markup. I know that was a lot to take in, but luckily the distribution process is the exact same as the accumulation process, just in reverse. Let's take a look at an example. The distribution process starts when the pressure of an upward move leaves the market. This upward move is called a markup, and the first thing we need to look for to signal the end of the markup phase is a buying climax. The buying climax, which is associated with feelings of euphoria and FOMO, is the perfect opportunity for smart money to begin unloading their long exposure and entering into new short positions. Accordingly, a buying climax is immediately followed by an automatic reaction to the downside. Following this automatic reaction is a bounce in the price, which creates a secondary test of the buying climax high. This is an opportunity for smart money to add to its short position, reversing and moving the market lower as soon as all of the supply has been absorbed. Since a new high was not made, we can begin to anticipate the price making a new low. 
This new low is called the sign of weakness and it ushers in phase B of the distribution process. Once a new low has been made and liquidity removed, the price is again free to drift higher. We are now well into phase B of the distribution process and just like in accumulation, the purpose here is to allow smart money to unload any remaining supply and accumulate as much short exposure as possible before the inevitable markdown to come. Next, the price makes an unexpected move as the upthrust event pushes it into new highs relative to the buying climax high. It even spends some time consolidating above the buying climax level. This event is designed to attract new long positions, and it's an easy trap to fall into. In contrast to the spring setup we learned about in the accumulation process, one final new high is made, called the upthrust after distribution. It's here that smart money fills the remainder of its short position, because almost immediately after the new high is made, the price reverses sharply lower and begins its official decline. On the way down, resistance is found at the last points of supply, but these bounces are shallow and sold into. The lows of the automatic reaction and the sign of weakness from phase B are taken out, and the market continues to fade lower and lower until a new accumulation process begins. Now that we understand how Wyckoff accumulation and distribution work, let's talk through how we can use the TrendSpider platform to find these setups occurring in real time. When we break down these accumulation and distribution events into their most basic terms, they're simply pivot points, and we can utilize the zigzag indicator to approximate them. I've got my market scanner open and my pre-built scan loaded up. In this example, pivot E represents the buying climax, pivot D is the automatic reaction, pivot C is the secondary test, pivot B, the sign of weakness, and pivot A, the upthrust. By defining these pivots relative to one another using the rules that we learned in the previous sections, we arrive at the parameters you can see here. Zigzag A is greater than C, Zigzag C is within range of E by plus or minus 2%. Zigzag E is greater than B. Zigzag B is less than D. And finally, price is closed less than zigzag E, but within range of it by plus or minus 5%. What we're after here is a truly actionable setup. We want to find instances in which the upthrust has occurred and the price has moved back down into the range. This is the optimal setup to take a short position as we have a clear level to trade against the upthrust high. After we run this scan and find all the names meeting this criterion right now, we can click through the list to find the best looking actionable setup. Once we've found it, we can use our horizontal line tool to create alerts at all the important levels, only taking action when the price is exactly where we want it to be. So there you have it, a brief rundown of Wyckoff accumulation and distribution and how to utilize TrendSpider's market scanner to find these setups occurring in real time. If you're already a TrendSpider user, I've added links to both accumulation and distribution scans in the description of this video. You can feel free to download them to your account today. I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in another TrendSpider technical analysis series video soon. As always, happy trading and catch you next time.